this robotic hand can do this, and also this. It's fast, it's strong, and it can feel. So what's not to love? And it's not just for people. Robots want this hand too. In fact, this is a robotic hand for everyone. This is a hard reset for the way we think about bionic limbs. Stay with us to see if I can crack an egg ah! and get a first-hand look at our bionic future. Get it? First-hand? Ha, huh. never mind. This is Hard Reset. We came to San Diego, primarily to play beach volleyball like Iceman and Maverick. But also to meet the team behind one of the most advanced robotic hands in the world. This is Psionic. And this is Adil, the founder. You might have seen him on Shark Tank. Wow. Wow. Oh, <laughs> or his robotic hand on Marquez Brownlee's latest tech review. Nice. And this is their flagship creation, the Psionic Ability Hand. It's a lightweight, flexible robotic hand that's redefining what machines and humans can do with touch. This hand was originally designed as a prosthetic, but it's actually a robotic hand for everyone. In fact, one of the first looks we had at this tech was a demonstration of how pretty much anyone could control it with off-the-shelf technology. We're gonna see if the, you can actually control the hand that I've been holding. Um, oh, fun. This, this, okay, okay, I think I got it right over there. Okay, now bend your finger, try bending your fingers. There we go, okay. That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, if you wiggle your fingers like super fast, it should, yeah, be able to like, yeah. If I remember any chords, no. <laughs> We had built our hand for humans. What we found is that if you're building a robot to do human tasks, it makes sense that the robots would use the same thing. This hand is everywhere. It's being used in research labs, robotics companies, and space projects. It even snuck into an earlier hard reset video about Apollo, the humanoid robot from Aptronic. It's also perfect for telepresence use cases because it can closely match the movement of the human hand and it's very intuitive to control. So what's the secret to building a robot hand that can do all this stuff, but still be affordable? In talking to like hundreds of patients and clinicians that we found out that these devices were very expensive, like 50 to 60 K. However, what made the problem worse was that because it would accidentally like hit their hand against the side of a table and because they were made out of rigid joints, they were breaking within like a couple months of being used. Sometimes the strongest material isn't the right one for the job. Don't worry about that. Made of wood, it's real sturdy. That's unacceptable. Oh boy. We were 3D printing these devices entirely, and, and so in doing that, we were like, if we're 3D printing these hands, they're gonna break this thing within like a day. So how could we still leverage the low cost of 3D printing, but make this hand more robust than anything else that's out there? Just like our hands, this one relies on a mix of soft and hard components. We came across this field called soft robotics. And in soft robotics, instead of making your joints and your links out of rigid materials like injection molded plastic or uh, custom machine steel, you're making them out of silicone and rubber, materials that are compliant and flexible. This mix of soft and hard means the hand has a capacity of up to 140 pounds and can do pull-ups. Plus, it's flexible enough to survive a punch. Jeez, oh, I didn't think you were gonna actually break it. So the fingers are flexible, as I was mentioning, so I can take it, I can smash it, and survives the impact. The hand itself uh, is on a quick disconnect, so it's fairly light. It's lighter than an adult human hand, and so an average adult human hand is like 520 grams. Our hand is 480 to 490 grams, and so that's like around 1.05 pounds. Wait a second, how do you weigh a human hand without like... I mean, thing will never even sit down on a scale, so... How does that... Any, anyway... These hands also have touch sensors, which give feedback to human or robot users. That's important because we rely on our hands as a sensory organ all the time. We weren't going to be exploring technologies that would be like, you know, millions of dollars to make like a touch sensor. We had to find technologies and like optimize them that could be in like, you know, dollars for sensing inside the hand and things like that. So what's it like to use these hands? Can I really pick up a raspberry or crack an egg? Let's go find out. There we go. Right, ready? This is Ani. She's the user experience lead at Psionic and a user of the ability hand herself. 
The thing that really stood out to me, it was the speed. There's the reaction time speed and then there's also the closing speed. It just makes it so that it feels like when I'm trying to close my hand, it just closes and I'm not waiting for it right. to close. I think it all just comes down to it feels a lot more intuitive. With my previous device, I, I would like stare at it and wait for it to respond to me. When I got the ability hand, I would manipulate objects or be doing two-handed things. I didn't have to stare at my hand and I think in turn that resulted in more trust in this system. Ani helped me learn how to use the ability hand. This is a control stick. It yeah. has bionic hand, ability hand okay. attached to it. Same one that I'm using. This version that I'm holding is connected to my arm with sensors that can read my nerve signals. So when I move my arm one way or another, it'll control the hand. All right, I th Sweet. think I got that part. Okay. I can switch between different preset grips and then open or close the hand. It took a little getting used to, but after some practice, I was able to pick up some objects and manipulate them somewhat delicately. The hand also has sensory feedback. For me, that was just a vibrating motor in the handle. Okay. But for prosthetics users, it's connected to their arms. When do we smash a board? <laughs> We're not yeah, doing that. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Nice. I wasn't ready to let go. <laughs> that grip should be stronger than that one, so that is yeah. a commentary on you. <laughs> oh, wow. I think. Okay, thanks. <laughs> no. All right, the knives um. are out. <laughs> Our hands can detect between 10 grams to five kilograms of weight. We have a resolution of like one gram, so it's like super, super light touches and changes that we can uh, detect. All right. I'm so worried that I'm gonna smash the raspberry. It's probable. Uh. <laughs> nice. Hey. Ow. No one was more surprised than I that I could pick this up on the first try. Whoa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it might look easy, but successfully handling a delicate object like this shows how advanced this hand is. Get in there. You're up? <laughs> I'm so nervous right now. Because, ah. Nice. Oh. Ah. <laughs> This is harrowing. Okay. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks good. I was able to pick up a raspberry and crack an egg. Sort of. But they wouldn't let me break any boards. That, and that's probably a pretty good call on their part. There are countless ways to control the ability hand, so you can imagine using it for teleoperation, eventually even sending feedback from its sensors to the operator's hands. If you're teleoperating a robot hand that looks like a human hand, then it, it's a very natural transition for people to be able to just jump in front of a camera or wear a glove and then control a hand that would mimic the exact same things that the human hand is doing. So you could enable remote surgery or going into a nuclear facility that you physically can't be present in. And it'll enable a lot of these different opportunities that weren't available before because they were too dangerous to do. By having a telepresence platform, now it's possible. What are we seeing here? This is a demonstration of um, our hand on a, a robot arm, mm -hmm. and we can actually do teleoperation of it through a camera. Visual hand tracking can take full advantage of the hand's dexterity. If I put my arm in front of it, it'll actually mimic the movements of it. So if I move my oh, arm wow. back, it'll move back. I can move it up and down too, and I can also move the fingers at the same time as well too. Would you like to shake hands? Oh. Oh, well, which, <laughs> which one of you? <laughs> Wait, maybe we can this figure out both. It's very but. confusing, yeah. So use your left arm, it's kind of like a mirror. Of? Yep, okay. exactly. <laughs> That's really amazing. And it is very quick. These fingers really do move. It's not surprising that the ability hand is also popular with robotics researchers. While it's true that robots have a huge variety of options for manipulators, it's also true that they live in a world designed around humans and human hands. So a tool like this will let them operate on equal standing with us. But of course, we should still be able to shut them off in case they ever go rogue. Down in there. <laughs> We're safe. <laughs> so even though this hand was designed for people, the largest market for it may be robots. What will that mean for us? So picture a scenario where this technology is in more people's uh, hands. The future is going to have a much more seamless integration between the human body and these robotic limbs. 
when things like nerve implants and brain implants come out, where when you touch the fingers, you can actually stimulate the nerves and make it feel like it's coming from your hand that you no longer have anymore because it's tapping into that system that your brain already has spatial awareness for. In other words, the cyborg future we've been shown in movies and TV shows is coming, and soon. The question is whether or not we'll be able to afford it. We can develop the most advanced bionic limbs, but if we can't make it accessible, then that completely defeats the purpose for us. The journey for me to build these bionic limbs has always been really personal. When I was seven years old, I was visiting Pakistan. That was the first time I had met someone missing a limb. She was my age, missing her right leg and using a tree branch, living in poverty. And that's what inspired me to actually go into this field and want to develop bionic limbs that were more advanced than anything else that's out there, but also more accessible than a lot of the offerings that are out there as well. Strangely enough, the thing that will make these hands more affordable for people is the fact that robots will need them too. The robotics market is exploding right now. In the next couple of years, we're going to be seeing tens of thousands of humanoid robots, and you multiply that by two, and that's how many hands you're going to need. At those volumes, we're going to really see the pricing of these devices drop way down. So we're looking at $5,000 a hand or sub $5,000. Think about how devices like the Nintendo Wii or iPhones took accelerometers from a niche device and made them into cheap, ubiquitous commodities. That technology has now made so many others better and more affordable, like drones and fitness wearables and VR headsets. Could robots do the same thing, but for prosthetic hands? We'll find out. That's the most important gesture in the world. That's what keeps the lights on at my house. So make sure you click the thumb button below this video. Please. <laughs>